Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And yes, we're not in the garage. We are at the Mille Miglia 2023. We're in Brescia. This is the famous hall where the Mille Miglia is always seen to kick off from. Huge hall. There are about 440 cars in the main group of the Mille Miglia. And then on top of that, there's about 120 Ferrari in the Ferrari Tribute. And then there's this green Mille Miglia this year. So there's some electric cars and that sort of thing. And they're right at the top of the hall. So what am I doing here? Well, I was kindly invited by Mercedes Classic to try out a th their 300 SL. So I'm doing the first day alongside Carl Wenglinger, who you might know um, from racing AMG, Sauber, 40 something starts in F1. He told me last night he'd finished nine Le Mans uh, series as well. So a, a terrific guy and uh, I'll be spending time with him in the car. He's down as driver to get out of here. I'll be trying a 300 SL at some point during the day. And then tomorrow, I'm trying their Mercedes, the EQXX. I'm intrigued by this car. This is their electric car that they showed last year with incredible range. They've looked at electric and how they're going to go into the future. And they've created a 100 kilowatt hour battery car that can do 750 miles on a charge. I think they've got over 1200 kilometers from it. So incredible uh, how efficient it is. But that's all for tomorrow. I'm going to do that as a separate video. But for today, it's Mille Miglia. Um, yesterday, signing on and it's typical millimetre. There is a lot of paperwork. You'd think it would all be done electronically and it's not at all. So you have to bring your licence, a race licence in and get registered and they want to know all about you signing various documents. And in here, this is the sort of prep area for the cars. This is where they're parked overnight and you have to go through the technical check. So before you're allowed out, there's that side of it. And then you go into Brescia and you have a seal put on your car. And you, you know, people are very proud of how many seals you can get on a car. I just want to show you a car down here, actually. You, you look at the number on the side of the car, that tells you its start time. And basically it tells you the age of the car. You've got about 440, as I say, in this car. So a really early car like this one, this is the earliest car I can find this uh, in this hall at the moment. Number three. So this must be a 27 or uh, 1927, 1930. I'll have to check what age it is. But what gets me here, this is OM made in Brescia. So this was actually manufactured in Brescia. And go back to tw uh, 1927. And Brescia is this industrial town. It was very famous for metalworking and c construction of the you know, emerging car industry of Italy. And that's why it starts in Brescia. Carry on going down here. I do love these. Porsche 356 Speedster. So the cut down screen, this is a later car. I think it's just more fun doing a uh, millimeter in an open car. They are forecasting a little bit of rain today, but th it's very interesting to see the mix of cars here. Uh, another early car with 39. What I've seen from the entry list, you, the m vast majority of the cars here are late. They're from 1949-50 on, over half the entrance. What the, uh, the organisers love is a bigger spread of cars. A little hint, if you are looking to do the Millimilia, the more unusual the car, or the earlier the car, the more chance you are of getting an entry to it. Anyway, let's have a look at a board over here. It's quite interesting showing the history and the times of Millimilia. You have to be careful where you walk in between the cars here because, yeah, these early cars, have they do leave little marks of where they've been, hence oil marks under here and this. I mean, I come to this event and I think I know cars. I have no idea what this is. A Salmerson, never, never heard of it. Number 37, so quite an early car. Another tiny 306, that one there. What is that? We'll go into details later, but the Mini Media was all about efficiency and, and, and Italy in the 50s was very keen on these tiny cars, tiny engine cars and how efficient they were and they had these classes for the lower CC cars. But anyway, we'll go into, we'll have a look at some of those later. But that's why I wanted to show you here, I've never seen this board so well displayed. So the first Mille ever, 1927, is here and the time for the winner was 21 hours and 4 minutes. <laughs> 
nearly a day. So that's, that's how tough it was getting around. It wasn't all tarmac roads doing the thousand miles. 28, they got it down to 19 hours. 1931 is, is another interesting year. It's the first year that a non-Italian car won the Mille Mille. This is when Mercedes-Benz came with the supercharged SSKL. And they, 16 hours, 10 minutes, uh, Cacarolia did that in. And then from then on, the Alpha 8Cs dominated. So 15 hours, 35, 14 hours. Where are we? 1938. The course was actually changed. There'd been a, a fatality on, on the track and they then did a circuit about nine laps of a hundred kilometre track. So the times, ignore those times. They aren't true to the th true thousand miles. It, if you wonder why at the miles, it was a Roman mile is how the distance was established in the first instance. And those early years, it's all about durability, proving the durability of your cars so people would buy your cars so that it would last forever. That's why the, all the races are long endurance races. And then we get to the glory years of, um, after the war and the crazy times of got down to 12 hours with a Ferrari 340 in America here, uh, 13 hours there, 12 hours. 11 hours and then 1955 Sterling Moss Dennis uh, Denkinson with his pace notes 10 hours 7 minutes the almost 100 mile an hour average round the millimeter never to be beaten again Mercedes then retired because of the terrible accident at Le Mans that year and the, the final cars 1956 11 hours 37 and 1957 10 hours 27 nearly you know 20 minutes behind the Sterling Moss time and when Sterling Moss did win in 1955 Fangio was in a similar car he was half an hour behind Sterling Moss so that's how incredible that Sterling Moss time was. Right. These are the two cars I'm in I didn't realize the EQXX is actually going to be beside this and this is I'm going to kick off with this this is the 300 SL if you're wondering about the 417 well this was John Fitz's car in the 1955 millimeter the same year that Sterling Moss did the incredible time he entered this car and did also the most amazing time as well it won its class and came fifth overall and that's it that's that's where we're going to be for, well, I'm going to be here for the next day. I, Carl Vending is going to start off. I'm going to be the other side. I've got to do the navigation. Something we've done just because it's quite warm today, you can actually take the panel, the glass panel out. So there is no window. They're in a little bag in the back, but uh, that is to help the ventilation. Some little things I didn't know about this car is the vents on the back. I've often wondered about these, but these are actually open into the cockpit. And that's how you vent the cockpit. There's no cover on them, but that's just to help when you close the door as well, the pressure, it makes the door close easily. If you want to know how you get in and out of one of these, well, you do that. And then that makes it much easier to get in and out of the car. We'll go around the interior later, but uh, yeah, lovely to see. And then tomorrow, I'll be in here and just finding out about this car, which is just a technical tour de force. Can't wait to find out more about it. But as I say, that's for tomorrow. Right, gather some water, get all the bits on, and in about an hour or so time, we'll be leaving. Carl Wenger will be along, and uh, we'll start the Mille Amelia 2023. Carl, good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, okay. start of a bit of crazy days, isn't there, <laughs> with this car? But you've done millimeter a few times before, haven't you? Yeah, it's the fourth time now this year. Is it? Right. Always in a 300 SL? Or? No, the first time I think it was in 2013 with a pre-war car, with the SS. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then last year, in 2015 and last year with, uh, with the SL Galvinia. Yeah? Oh, it was again. Yeah. How is it? Is it all right? Good place? Oh, good car. Very nice. Very, very nice to drive. Very reliable. Yeah. Very fast, if necessary. So That's fast, good car. yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah, well, I, you're putting me in the navigation seat to begin with, and I've not done that. So um, hopefully at the beginning, there'll be plenty of things to follow. and We won't get too lost. 417 is its time. You'll see it all over the car. That was its start number in 1955. And that meant it started at 417 in the morning mm -hmm. to go off. We've got a much more civilized start, haven't yes. we? Yes, About we About two o'clock or something like that, yeah. isn't it? 
but it was so they finished mm -hmm. in daylight. So the, yeah, the fastest cars left last, as I understand it. It's five or five days now, isn't it? Yeah. It's, um, while this car got round in, I should know, I'll flash it up on screen, it's 11 hours something mm -hmm. it went round and it was the fastest time by a production car by some margin. Amazing. This is the first leg. So this is the road book you get on Millimedia. And basically you get, a, these are the symbols you have to work through. And that is the route we do today. So Brescia, down to Milan and Mamitida on, on the coast. And this is where all the flooded area is. So we're, I'm afraid we're gonna have to go through all that. But this will be my duty to get him through Brescia and out onto the course. So today's total time we arrive tonight is 358 kilometers, 0.99, so uh, 359 kilometers to do today. And there's some time trials and that sort of thing. I've never been in a 300 SL before, I'm embarrassed to say. It's one of those cars you know about, but it's sort of from a different era. The 50s is a completely different era, but it's... I was reading a book the other day about it, and they were describing it as potentially the first supercar. Whether it was Muir, everybody thinks about the Muir as being the first supercar, but whether this, as a production car, was the first, is a discussion point. This is a little rendezvous area, just where we're meeting just before the start. And uh, it's already very hot inside that 300 SL. We're just trying to work out. We've got definitely got the heater not on. Everything's turned to blue, but all the heater ducts are red hot. So we can have a mechanic just look at it because it's always hot in one of those, but it's particularly hot like that one. Yeah, we just asked the mechanic and he's checked the car and the heating is definitely off. So it's just part of living with a 300 SL. Oh, yeah, there's the engine all started over three litre straight six and pure injection you can't really see it's the, all the other side mighty impressive here the exhaust so that's all the heat coming into the passenger well just because all the uh, exhaust goes this side the reason for the high sill is because of the chassis a bit like the Countach tubular chassis under here and the body is put on top of the chassis and it's, it was a way of doing race cars in the day it's very light relatively this uh, car it's around the well say 1300 kilos as you see it here in production form and, it, and its secret is this chassis some were made with alloy bodies this isn't there's only about 12 of them but they are in this form this is a two million euro car in this sort of condition restored by Patrick and you can tell an early one if it's got knock-on wheels and then later they move to bolt-on wheels and a hubcap but that's that's the early version of the 300 SL. This is a hot car isn't it? It is constantly hot. Yeah we always believe there is the heat down but it isn't. It's not. <laughs> so we now know. So these are 405 so they're all waiting up at 341 uh, 290 so yeah we just pull over somewhere we pull over after this somewhere little island here 383 yeah, already behind us 382 339 I'm just going to walk down towards the start line just so I can see some of the cars here that are competing. So you're basically looking for numbers until you get to the back of the queue. So 294, he's ahead. What a pretty Ferrari that is. Recognize those tyres. Lovely little dash. Love that radio. Ah. <laughs> it's 
straight from France. That little Renault Dauphine. Bucket seats in it as well. somewhere down there I'm not going to walk all the way down to the start but this is where it really starts to get busy and my tip if you're not entered into the millimeter is to get to Brescia have fun and just pop out somewhere down near the start and just see everything go past it's quite a parade we're at 287 we've got to remember there's 440 cars entered this year and they all have to go over the ramp right down there somewhere I did it well, I brought that little Alpha Duetto down, so if you want to watch that video, I'll follow the link up there. But I'm going to make my way back, join Carl in the car, and get in this queue, ready for the start. Oh, there it is. Let's see if I can get a lift with this one. Good. Excellent. Yeah, that's good. They're about 300 at the back of the queue, so we're all good timing. Okay. Yeah, it's still nearly 20 minutes to go. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, five, two. Go on, we're not. Ah, there we are. Thank you. That's it. I'll just concentrate. Let's the start. Hello. Hey, ah, there we are. <laughs> yeah, we are. I didn't see that. <laughs> Thank you. I haven't repressed it. Right, that was the point one to that point. Point four straight on, and then, and then we're going to turn right. So we go up there, it's the start of regulation. Ah, okay. First one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, there's already the first one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, but where's our iPad now? No. <laughs> no. I don't know. Why are we meant to have an iPad? It's a 460. No, they said they, you put it in the car. Here is the iPad. See? We have to put it on. Oh, and no. Then, and then uh, special stage number one, uh, for example. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, right. Photo booth. Maybe Milli Milia, is it this one? That isn't. Oh, that says Octane. Octane, powered by Octane. Chrono Master, Sector A. Sector 1. Start. <laughs> is this this? Well, we. I just, it's written in German, just let me see. It says Wertungsprüfung, that means stage Autodromo di Imola. Oh, Imola, no, this is wrong. That. No. Start now, maybe. Okay. I've stuck my press start. Uh, I've got no time. And 
it. Oh, what a pay. Sorry. <laughs> we'll be we will get it wrong. We will, be not, we, will, we, will, we will be not competing anyway. No, I think we've lost it. <laughs> lost it at the start. Give the first corner. This came as a complete shock. First time I did Miller Media. <laughs> So what is this road? Ah, this is this Castello 1 to 8, you see? 8 stages. This ah, was. Yes, this yeah. is it. Because here on the top is Castello, huh? Yeah. Oh, we keep the same distance to Bell, well, so good. then, then we are <laughs> to the same speed. first go with a special stage we've already given up with this iPad and trying to make it work yeah you've tried it before as well haven't you I've tried well, it before but even if you know how to, to use the iPad uh, you have no chance anything no. we were talking earlier you're yeah you're not racing now are you? No. at the moment yeah no. not anymore but no. you're tempted by something like Goodwood Revival or something yes I mean I was there I believe was it two years ago yeah but sometimes it clashes with other uh, with other uh, appointments I have so it was not possible going this year again to Goodwood Festival of Speed yeah and yeah if in the future it's possible to the revival again I'm looking forward because it's a great event uh, but yeah. I mean no modern racing anymore uh, no no more uh, no. with, 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 act, with modern cars no this I stopped in 2016 and your last race was in a in an AMG SLS GT3 car. Oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. It was, in... I believe, 2016 with a private Austrian team somewhere. Was it Zolder? I don't know. Because then I said, OK, it is enough now. I stopped it. <laughs> yeah. What was your last endurance race? A uh, big one. Uh... The last big one was 2013, the 24 hours of Spa. Have you done 24 hour Nürburgring? I did, yeah. yeah. Three times 2002, no, 2003, 4, and 8. In 2003, we were overall second. I believe, ma'am, was not, I was not performing so well because after 24 hour race, I still had the, had the impression I don't know this circuit. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, I don't know, but still, we were consistent driving and was good teammates, so we came we second overall. Yeah. The road clear is gone now. Huh? We've got quite a convoy going on here. Okay. Do you want to say who's in front? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Front is Bernd Schneider. Yeah. <laughs> in a 300 SL as well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's amazing. I wonder how many Formula One starts we've got between us in this these two cars. Quite a lot, haven't we? Probably 60. 
as well. Yeah, maybe more. Huh? Yeah. I think I have 43 and Bernd for sure has two seasons minimum. Yeah, so 30, I think it's yeah, more than 30. Like yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's quite a team. Yeah, but even we can't find a way past. They're using the inside lane a couple of Porsche speedsters. Yeah. We've been getting on 94 kilometers into a 125 kilometer stage. Uh, typically sticky Italian traffic, isn't it? At the moment. Yeah, it's always here from Lake Garda, direction of Verona, every year is the same. It's very busy here. Yeah. Always the same road, always the same kind of traffic. So, yeah. And today, no police, no carabinieri helping us. So. We had one earlier who was just waving at the crowds, really, wasn't he? <laughs> he was much cleaner on doing that than anything else. No, he didn't make the road clear. He was yeah. waving to the ground. The more you do these mid the more amazing it to me it seems that they did the crazy times, the Sterling Moss and all the rest of it. It just defies belief. Yeah. But for sure in a completely different condition than now. Yeah. And I mean the speed, what they did, the average speed for the whole rally, even with all the, the refueling stops, yeah. that was yeah, I mean, incredible. Okay. Did you ever get the chance with Mercedes to do the 300? Um, SLR? Uh, yes, uh, in Goodwood, Festival Speed. Oh, did I drove you? it once up the hill. Yeah? yeah? Wow, that's a privilege. Yeah, it is a privilege. I mean, I was really, I mean, I was proud to do it and I was really taking care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> very different machine to this then. Yes, but still very, uh, from, from, from the, uh, uh, easy to handle. I mean, very nice gearbox. Uh, Brakes, very good engine response, so yeah, a nice car to drive. Um, but of course, only with certain speed. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, anyway, we're going to crack on, get to the end of this stage, and then I think we're going to swap over. Yep, we do. You're, you're very, I'm not missing driving this section at all, so I'm very grateful. Mercedes team is running on sustainable fuel and that is what we're doing now. It's quite a few competitors are doing this in this race this year. It's a bit like Le Mans. But sustainable fuel is coming everywhere in motorsport including the Mina Mina. since we filled up <laughs> and um, yeah I got the lucky straw because we went straight onto a dual carriageway and 
Yeah, this thing just romps along. I'm surprised how much it builds power as the revs build. Well, it's not unsurprised, that's what these sort of cars do, but it just wants to fly down the autostrada. We always a dual car anyway, actually, but um, yeah, it would cruise height happily at 150 thereabouts uh, with no strain whatsoever. And then, yeah, just doing some overtakes, it's sort of slightly lower in third. Third gear is perfect for overtaking and um, get above 4,000 RPM, woof, it's off. Slightly long brake pedal, it's got, yeah, hinged at the bottom pedals on it and there's quite a lot of travel just on the brake, but then they bite and this version, uh, this car actually has the bigger brake option on the drum brakes, I am told. But um, yeah, not exactly modern standard, but pretty good for mid 1950s. We're now in a queue for a, another special stage, which are a bit tedious, but that's how they can call this thing a rally. And yeah, we're just going to watch the temperature gauge. And it's going to, uh, it's time for the, yeah, I must notice I've got sunglasses on. Yeah, there might be time for those to come off. It's uh, 10 to 7. And I don't know what time we're going to finish tonight. 11 o'clock, do you think? Oh, I think. Or later. I guess midnight, huh? because yeah, midnight. Probably we still have a stop. Yeah, we've got another stage, stop we? with, with rest, and then uh, I yeah. guess it will be midnight to be yeah. left there. <laughs> it's always the way. But we've got a big box of food and goodies in the back, so we're going to be diving into those. Yeah, very well cool, that stuff. Yeah, it looks a bit healthy, though. Oh, that's the only trouble. But then they changed the circuit. Huh? Because you were there racing that year. Yeah. When? No. No, no, I finished. Was the weather tricky as well? No, I don't no. think it was, wasn't no, it? Was no, it? Was it? Was dry condition? Um, was dry condition. There was nothing special. At this time there was no chicanes after start finish. It was a fast left in the flat. Yeah. And then you came down here with more than 300 kilometers an hour and the Ratzenberger, the front wing broke before he started breaking. Uh, and that moved him more you know, in a bad angle into the wall, the high speed, and I think he broke his neck. Around here, what it was this? And Senna, yes, got killed uh, because whatever happened, he lost yeah. it. The car went went out. Either they said the steering column broken was broken, or because it was right after safety car, the tire pressure was a little, and the yes. car um, touched on the ground and moved in a different direction. Uh, yeah, and, and Ratzenberger's car finally stopped here uh, because it moved all the way down after it tied them back into the wall. Uh. So it was always a good race because good atmosphere because quite close to uh, Ferrari's home. Uh. So a yeah. lot of spectators. There is no reason. Uh, uh, I am it's, it's a bit tight there, man. No, no, it's okay. Just uh, no, no, not touched. Uh. Mentre voi facevamo la guerra, voi sotto sotto continuavate a produrre automobili, avete fatto gli italiani, quindi avevamo già una nomea ai tempi. 
321 e qui ovviamente ancora una volta il marchio tedesco la fa la padrone ma anche qui Mercedes deriva come, come marchio This is end of day one of the Mille Miglia. It is quarter to 12 and it's quite challenging to wrap up this video. I'm in a car park, this is where our hotel is over there. We've just refueled the car and then it's gonna disappear underground into a dark uh, car park and uh, yeah, be packed up for the night. But I wanted to tell you about the, the car a bit more in silence and what I've learned today about 380 kilometers did in this. I did about 200 kilometers in it. And it surprised me, this 300 SL. There was a number of things I didn't expect. One, the engine is super strong and it builds on revs and that sound, when you heard it in third gear accelerating and you just ate up cars, you suddenly found you were accelerating really quite quick and you could pass, go past things at, yeah, more speed than I expected. Two, Sharp steering, didn't expect that. Older cars like this, they tended to make the, the gearing slower on the steering to make it lighter, because there's no power steering in this car. But actually, the car is lighter than you might think, 1,300 kilos or something like that, about that. And it's because it has this chassis underneath. I'm surprised it's actually made from steel and still that weight, but it is. But it does give it this sort of race car feel. There's less roll, that power of the engine, and someone was telling me last night, the reason this was so quick on the Mille Miglia is it's a thousand miles and it's not as wearing on the driver as perhaps some of the more Italian higher strung cars were. So even though it was a you know production car, you could keep that average speed up. And that's what I learned today. I was doing bigger speeds and I was having to come off the throttle because I was going too quick. And I wasn't expecting that. Um, what else to say about the car? I, I, it's, it's the downside of this car. It was never designed to be a production car. People saw it as the race car and an American importer for Mercedes said, I could sell this car. And that's why it was launched at New York Motor Show. I think it was 1954 and they lapped it up. The bit that's lacking on this is forward ventilation. It's hot in there. It takes a lot of heat away from the engine. It wasn't designed to be a production car. And uh, you, yeah, it does get quite hot overall. And you take these side windows out and they, you put them out. It's a bit like having a caterum that you decide whether you're gonna run with side windows or not. But they're in a bag in the back and uh, it's very nice to run it without. You don't notice it. And I think it's one of the few cars you photograph with the doors up alongside the Countach. So there you go. That's what I've learned about Mille Miglia and the 300 SL. It's been a real lesson, actually, just driving this car from the 50s. Is it a supercar? That's the, that's the thing. It's almost too sensible. If you think, I think the Muir is more the first supercar because this is is front engined. Um, it's comfortable. It, it has the wow factor almost from the doors but it's a regular uh, Mercedes, but a deeply impressive one. And uh, its history is second to none on the Mille Miglia. One last thing, John Fitz drove this car. He did, he worked with Dennis Jenkinson to do the Mille Miglia. He wanted to do better because he didn't know the roads as well as the Italian. That's why he teamed up with Dennis Jenkinson and they spent a couple of months doing the pace notes. Mercedes then managed to sign Sterling Moss to do Mille Miglia and um, Sterling asked if he could use Dennis Jenkinson. John Fitz said, take Jenks, I want Mercedes to win. And that's the backstory why this car is so important to the history of Mercedes. Because Jenks used his pace notes he'd worked on with John Fitz who drove this car. And that's where the half hour, that amazing time came for the Mille Miglia with Sterling Moss in 1955 in the 300 SLR. John Fitz, because he'd done, gone out to Italy with um, um, Jenks to do it did that amazing time an hour and a half was it an hour and 20 minutes slower than Sterling Moss and you think Fangio that same race was half an hour behind Sterling it was an amazing result John F 
Popovich did with the production car. So there you go. That's the story on the 300SL. That's the story of the 2023 Mille Amelia first day. I hope you enjoy this sort of backstory and a bit of a mix of what it's like on the Mille Amelia. Meeting Carl Venninger as well, some of those stories about F1. Tomorrow is all about the Mercedes EQXX and I've got a start time of 5.40. I've got to be on the ramp at 5.40. So sleep, well, it's a bit of an option tonight. I'm not sure if I'm going to get any. Charge the cameras up and I'll see you in the morning. Time for a beer.